dead or is it just down? Did you slay this eater? Your orders were to await the main force before engaging. No, Captain. It wasn't us, I swear it. The man came out of nowhere and cut it down before we knew what was happening. By himself? Certainly it is no light warden, but nevertheless. It's true. Felled it with a single swing of his axe, he did. I've never seen anything like it. So I says to him, Who are you, the warrior of bleeding darkness? And he says, No. I'm a warrior of light. And that was it. Buggered off as quick as he came. Warrior of light, huh? A warrior of light? Why would someone go around calling himself that, though? It was those bastards who caused the flood. I mean, if you were going to pretend to be anyone, it'd be her. The warrior of darkness. Hey? Oh, oh I didn't know. It's an honor. Hello. Since the Eater is no longer a threat, our work here is done. Return to your posts. I had hoped to fight at your side today. But I'll continue to follow your example. And may we meet again. Yeah. I apologize for the wasted journey. It seems I overestimated the threat. As for this warrior of light, I do not know who would be brazen enough to take that mantle for his own. Whatever it may once have meant, it is forever tainted by the association with the Flood. The Exarch told me the truth of Ardbert and his comrades' deeds, and I am aware they played some part in your own triumph. But to most, they are synonymous with the calamity that befell this world. Still, if this man is minded to destroy Sin Eaters, I may forgive him his unfortunate choice of alias. But that is neither here nor there. I thank you for accompanying me. With that concluded, shall we return to the Crystarium? There is a proposal I should like to make. Forgive me. There is one more thing. A personal concern of mine. I had hoped you might have a moment to speak privately. Take your time. I shall go on ahead. Yes? I will not mince words. This matter concerns the Exarch. Though his countenance belies his age, his demeanor never has. He has seen more than any man should and grown ever more weary with time. But I see I give the wrong impression. While it is true he attempted to open a letter with a salmon fillet the other evening, we are not here because I suspect his mind is deteriorating. <laughs> Let's open a letter with a salmon fillet? <laughs> Nor do I believe him to be so maddeningly unconcerned by the prospect of his own death as he once was. Indeed, the opposite is true. It is for this reason that I seek your advice. Since he returned from the Tempest, the Exarch is... not as he was. He seems a different man. A younger man. <laughs> I know not the details of his research, but when I saw him at work recently, there was a glint in his eye that I had never seen before. He looked... happy. It was as if he had peered into the future and for the first time... found joy there. Though it gladdens me to see him thus, I wonder if I should not keep my distance. I fear that my presence will only anchor him to the past. Remind him of all the pain that came before.
<laughs> he's lost without you, you know, and he misses you already. Are you sure? We sure seem like it. Then perhaps we might remain as we were. As we have always been. What a relief. In that case, I will have to speak with him about the amount of time he is spending at work. This research is important, I know. But if he refuses to consider his own health, I will have to consider it for him. Oh, I'm worried about this so-called warrior of Lord light is taking on the look of Ardbert, at least. I will not keep you. You and your comrades have much to discuss. We'll see the others back to their posts. I mean, I definitely know what the little bit is doing. Oh, how exactly is he planning? Oh. For now, and now, the others were quite shocked to hear what we found in Lakeland. But now that you're here, there is a proposal I should like to make. I've been spending a great deal of time in the cabinet of curiosity, and of late, I have noted more and more people perusing books on history, the years leading up to the flood in particular. I suspect they wish to know more about the Warriors of Light, as well they should, but nearly everything I come across describes them as Sin Eaters or worse. Regardless of whether or not this Warrior of Light is who they claim to be, I worry that their sudden appearance, in conjunction with this renewed interest in their predecessors, may lead to growing unrest and fear. If the people of the Crystarium seek the truth, I say we give it to them. I too can attest to the falsehoods found within many, full many of the Cabinet's tomes, with nary a mention of the noble deeds of Ardbert and his com comrades. To be fair, they bear some responsibility for the flood, but when the tale is told again and again over the course of a century, I'm not surprised to see the roles distorted and then painted as villains. Were it not for the record stored within the Crystal Tower, I would have had no reason to question the narrative. Fortunately, the, that knowledge was of no use, for when I arrived here in the first, they their reputation had already been irreparably tarnished. That said, there still remained those who worked tirelessly to defend their good name in those early days following the flood. Considering all the good they had done, I find it a wonder they needed defending at all. They brought to justice the man who misused my knowledge to bring about the fall of Herbert. That such heroes could be spoken of in the same breath as Sin Eaters is absurd. Under normal circumstances, I would agree, but as time passed, those who knew firsthand of their deeds dwindled. In the end, only one truth remained, that they were the cause of the flood. With the world on the brink of oblivion, it was all too easy for the warriors of light to become villains deserving only of resentment and hate. At that point, the truth mattered little. It would not change their lot. Thanks to all of you, however, their lot has changed, and now they may heed the long-forgotten truth. You claimed it was Ardbert who helped you overcome Emmett Selk, correct? Such a revelation would do well to sway the hearts of those who knew him only as a villain. I have shared this with a select few, but one and all must be told of his sacrifice. To that end, I say we proceed with Alphano's plan. We call together the people of the Crystarium and recount to them the true tale of the Warriors of Light and the flood that followed in their wake. Well, what's the use, Eris? Spread the word, I say.
Then we're all for one mind on that matter. Good. Exarch, might I ask you to continue working with Beck Log on our means of returning home? The rest of us will see to the gathering the people see to gathering the people of the Crystarium in the Exedra. We have to reach out to anyone and everyone who might be willing to lend in here. With any luck, word will spread and more will accompany them. What are those other so-called warrior of light will make his will show up? A pendant. Well, well, to what do I owe this pleasure? Whatever it is, I must ask you be brief. With the night returned, visitors have been flocking to the Crystarium, and I find myself too busy by half. I don't mind it though, seeing the stairs so full of life and excitement, one can almost forget the flood ever happened. The Warriors of Light? Yes, the Exarch has mentioned them before, but everyone knows them now as the Cardinal Virtues. Are you suggesting there's more to it than that? Well, you've yet to steer us wrong, so I'm willing to hear what you have to say. Got one on their way. Oh, that's a deep hole. Ruggy. Come to browse wares in the market, have you? Well, I can guarantee you'll have no trouble finding what you need, whatever it may be. Under Yomor's new leadership, trade has never been more prosperous. Where does that fellow from Daedalus Stoneworks has taken over as mayor? Did he really? Little wonder business is booming the way it is. I imagine it won't be long before all of North Rancher reaps the benefits. But you've come not but you've not come to talk about the market. Something on your mind? I see. The Exarch did mention they had something to do with your returning the night to Norvrent. Alright, consider my interest peaked. Down. Boom. Cheshire meal. There is my what a wonderful surprise. So I hope you're being here doesn't mean someone's been hurt. Thanks to you, I've had far fewer patients coming through my door of late. Which is a shame, come to think of it. I've had fewer opportunities to test my new medicines. Hee <laughs> I jest, of course. It's actually been quite pleasant to have a few moments to myself now and again. The truth about the Warriors of Light? But the Exarch has already spoken with me about them. Well, if there's more to the table, I'd very much like to hear it. Oh, that's not the bunch I meant to brush. Here on the Emerald Lunch. Oh, but yes. Well, over here. Yeah. Ow. Oh. Well, well, what a coincidence. I was just reading over a letter I received from Grinnell not too long ago. He says a visitor from the Crystarium found him at the bottom of the ocean. That she inspired him to reach new artistic heights. I can only think of one person capable of both feats, though I'd say the letter is the latter is far more impressive. I think fate would bring the two of you together in such a place. Sorry, you mean the extract didn't tell us the whole story of the words of light? Well, whatever he's left unsaid, I'm all ears. How about here? What's happening here? Come with your attention. Not that way. 
Oh my. Well, this can't be. Surely there is at least one book here that does not cast the warriors of light and their deeds in such a negative light. Now. Oh, Sarahs, forgive me. The cabinet of curiosity has been bustling with visitors of late, but I fear our repository lacks for the knowledge they seek. The people wish to know the truth of the flood of the warriors of light. I have searched high and low, but alas, every account portrays them as no better than sin eaters, abominations worthy only of scorn and resentment. I know they were not always judged so harshly, yet I can find no proof, and I dare call myself a librarian. Well, the Exarch's going to be telling us all that. You would address the people and tell them the truth of the words of light? Well, I will, I guess. How wonderful. You have regaled me with the tale once before, but I would love to hear it again. Oh, and you may be assured I will not come alone. Hello. There you are. Between the four of us, I dare say we've swept the crystallium from top to bottom. Now we need but wait for the people to gather. Yes, this looks to be nearly everyone. Let us begin, shall we? Though I am usually the first to hold forth at such events, I think on this occasion that honor should fall to you. They would be more inclined to take the word of the warrior of darkness. Indeed. In light of the subject matter, who better than thee to speak these truths? of light did all that uh-huh so they never i mean they only ever wanted to help uh, and when everything they'd done turned to ash they still carried on they gave everything to stop the flood first their lives then their souls and they managed it too in the end they saved us, and we cursed their names. This should go a long way towards clearing the air. Oh god, I knew this was gonna show up here. Impossible. We can see him too. I definitely see something. You don't think it's a ghost, do you? <laughs> I know it. Nay, yonder standeth no bloodless apparition, 
but a warrior of light and darkness both. Ardbert. What in the world? It's you! The one who slew the Eater! That it should be the warrior of darkness who brought the truth to light. You've saved me a fair bit of time. Though I have a few words of my own to say. People of the Crystarium! I am Ardbert. One of those you know as a warrior of light. That's impossible. You should be dead. I. That I should. But as the world has been given you life, so too have I. I know not why I, and I alone, have been gifted this chance. But I do know this. Only by the will of the star itself could such a miracle come to pass. The hero who stands before you now, the warrior of darkness, is not of this world. And the day will come when she must return to her home. But this land is our home. And if it is to remain so, now and forevermore, it is we who must protect it. <laughs> it's like it's up to this artbird. on saviors from afar has passed. It is you who must rise. You who must become the new warriors of light. I can't tell if this is actually Arbert or something that Elidibus did. What? Us? Warriors of light? None of us were born heroes, my friend. I was only ever a man with a thirst for adventure. But wherever my journeys took me, I was invariably confronted with the same choice. To lend what aid I could to those in need, or not. And I always chose the former. Any one of you could do the same. All you need is the will to help your fellow man, and the resolve to see it through. From thine own lips did we learn of Ardbert's fate, and by thy countenance I gather thou art not inclined to recant thy testimony. Yet whosoever this man may be, his words hold truth and resonate with the citizenry besides. For us to voice our doubts here and now would serve but to sow disquiet. T'were better we retired unto the ocular and there discuss this matter in private. Yeah. Go. I will stay here and watch. He was gonna show up there, so we didn't seem like he was doing anything wrong there. At least. So, that is a warrior of light of the first. I've not had the pleasure of making his acquaintance, but as you all seem to be in agreement, I gather this is no simple case of mistaken identity. As far as I was able to discern, that was indeed Ardbert. It has been a long time, but not that long. Could he truly have been resurrected as he claims? Looks like him and sounds like him, but it isn't him. Trust his very soul unto thee. I see no reason to question thy judgment. Nor I. 
To my eyes, your ether burns as brightly as the day you slew Emmett Selk. That is proof that he is with you still. Yet that which standeth now before the people is far more than a passing imitation. I am reminded of the cardinal virtues, though a sin eater he is not. Which leaveth but one plausible explanation. Asians. That he is an Asian. Given their fondness for posthumous possession, I would have to agree. From what I understand, the warriors of light were laid to rest in Yulmor by those whom they had aided in life. At the time, some few still remembered them as heroes. Needless to say, four of them were subsequently exhumed to serve as the virtues. And if one knew where to look, Ardbert too would not have been difficult to find. Assuming then that this is indeed the work of an Asian, my mind inevitably turns to the last remaining paragon to survive the sundering. Elidibidus. Elidibus. That Xenos hath reclaimed his own flesh is known. Thus evicted from his borrowed form and cognizant no doubt of Emmet Selk's failure here in the first, it is quite possible the emissary chose Ardbert for his next vessel. Inhabiting the flesh of the fallen? My, that is unsavory. And they do this often, you say? Yeah, they do. Verily, for they possess no corporeal forms of their own. In what one may term their natural state, none save those gifted with the echo can perceive them. Indeed, when Elidibus intruded upon the waking sands, his presence did go unmarked by all save Ninfilia and the Warrior of Light. On that occasion, I myself remained ignorant of his coming until after his departure. It was only at a later juncture, when he deigned to appear before me in borrowed flesh, that I was finally able to take the measure of him. In such puppetry do the Asians engage when they seek to influence the course of history. And they have gained much by it. Emmet Selk single-handedly built the Galian Empire in this manner, while the Hebrea came close to conquering Eorzea having taken possession of Thancred's living body. Yet it must needs be noted that the Asians cannot avail themselves of all mortal vessels. For were they able to do so, none would serve as a better pawn than our own redoubtable champion. Mayhap the blessing of light shieldeth Hydlin's chosen from Asian influence. Or mayhap other forces are at work. We cannot say for certain. Whatever the reason, I hope it holds true. I dare not contemplate what might come to pass otherwise. Is it not peculiar then that Ardbert's mortal remains should be susceptible, given that he was once a warrior of light? Or did the final departure of his soul make it possible, perhaps? Yes, technically the body wouldn't have any traces of Heidelin's blessing? Regardless, to hear an Asian use him to call forth new warriors of light boggles the mind. Elidibus hath ever been an enigma, his ostensible purpose being to preserve the balance between light and dark. When he made overtures towards me, however, I was afforded a glimpse behind the mask of the self-appointed emissary. I shall not defend mine actions, undertaken in pursuit of a better understanding of our foe as either wise or prudent. Nevertheless, what little I did glean may now prove useful. Elidibus possesseth a subtle mind, practiced in the art of manipulation. That he coax this star's most valiant heroes as far as the source with naught save half-truths is no trifling feat. And now I believe he doth employ his skills once more to some as yet unknown end. 
Though naught is certain, should my suspicions prove true, we shall have need of all our wits if we are to uncover and thereafter thwart his plot. Agreed. Tis plain that simply speaking out against him will not avail us. At best, it would only serve to confuse the people. And I would hesitate to do anything which might tarnish Ardbert's reputation once more, nor yours by association. That being the case, it may be wise to keep a covert eye on this Ardbert's movements, as we attempt to discern his purpose and how best to mitigate his influence. His performance appears to have concluded. What now? Go back out and follow him? It would appear Master Alfino already hath pursuit in mind, and I suspect one pair of eyes shall better serve our cause than half a dozen. Let the rest of us maintain an inconspicuous distance, for the present at least. Hmm. What the heck are you trying to plot, a little bit? Sleep disturbed. You did well to dispel the falsehoods surrounding the warriors of light and their actions prior to the flood. So I must say the reappearance of Ardbert, or rather, one who appropriated his identity, was a rather curious development. He's an imposter, of that there is no doubt, but to the masses he will appear as a hero returned from the grave. After the warriors of light were laid to rest in Yomor, the people prayed fervently for the gods to deliver them from their plight, prayed that these fallen heroes be born again for their sacrifices. What bitter irony. Everyone would like to know why Ardbert urge the people to become warriors of light themselves. Ere we take action, we must needs ascertain his intent. Let us pray that Master Alpha will return as soon with that most essential knowledge. For now, I think it best to appraise Thancred and Reen of our efforts. If we do confront Ardbert, we shall no doubt have need of their judge of their strength. Agreed. I think it prudent we all take measures to prepare for what's to come. Beck Lug and I will continue our research into how we might improve the spirit vessel, but it might one day carry you home. Hmm, then I think it's time I return to the Greatwood. Until now, everything we have learned of the Asians has been handed to us at their leisure. But that was one of Emmett Selk's unique failings. I have no reason to think Elidibus will be as forthcoming. Fortunately, I recently received word from Fano that heretofore unexplored chambers have been discovered deep within the Kitana Revel. Almet believes the relics within tell of a great calamity that befell an ancient civilization. That of the Asians, perhaps? They may lead us to the truths we seek. Would you care for company? I wouldn't dream of going without you. When you're ready, make for Fano. Alma and her sisters will be expecting us. Then let us be about our tasks. Pray give my regards to the V's. Down, but down, but down, but down, but down, down, down. Hello. Welcome, allies of Ronka. We have accomplished much since last you came. With the Light Warden dead and its minions dispersed, we have at last reclaimed our hunting grounds near Raktika Falls. It was there that we discovered more ruins. We ran afoul of no traps while exploring its halls. We determined that the innermost chambers were warded by magic. 
We all were in agreement before any investigation could proceed, you should be summoned. We are grateful that you did. From what I, from what you have told me, I strongly suspect that the wisdom my comrades and I seek can be found within. This wisdom could prove invaluable, for we may soon face a foe whose greatest asset is our ignorance. I see that it is good that we have that you have come. Oronka was once home to the greatest of weapons, knowledge and understanding. And it is our duty to ensure you and yours do not want for either. That said, we must proceed with caution. To have reached the innermost chambers unmolested suggests a more formidable deterrent yet lies within. Come now, surely any threats sleeping within the ruins pale in comparison to those we have faced thus far. This is not a game, sister. You should not be so eager to run headlong into danger. Oh, and who was it pining for the return of our allies so he might venture into the ruins, touching her staff at night, wishing it were- oh. You promised not to tell. <laughs> what was she doing? Did I suggest we be going? <laughs> Get back here. Wait, what? I want to hear the rest of that. Remind me exactly how old are you and your sisters? On second thought, perhaps it's not better for it's better. For, it's for the better that I do not know. Pray forgive their overzealous nature. And save we three have been privileged to escort you and yours into the ruins and bear witness to its secrets. Their hearts now burn with a curiosity that is not easily satiated. Please, he needed to apologize. Oh, please, he needed to apologize. As a seeker of knowledge myself, I understand full well their enthusiasm. If not for your sedulous efforts to protect the ruins, you would not be afforded this opportunity. We're gonna have a time my voice has cracked already. Speaking of which, I believe I have kept you away from the ruins long enough. Come, let us make for the Kitana Rebel. Let us go. Okay. Lahi. Oh God. We're gonna have to go in here again. Looks like I don't have to. It is most strange for these halls to be left unguarded. Have care when breaking the seal on the chamber door. Danger surely awaits us on the other side. It is recommended that you set aside sufficient time to view these scenes in their entirety. Wow! Yeah! Where the boss was. Come, our new discoveries are to be found this way. Satan, oh. The people of Ronka are known to have venerated animals, but these features do not match those of any indigenous species. This is no common beast. Though that much is plain from its proportions. Lifelike, is it not? One could almost imagine it breed.
<laughs> Why you? <laughs> this owl, by contrast, seems no different from the others we've seen. The sealed door lies ahead. Hmm, wonder what's behind there. Treasure, knowledge, both. As you see, one statue is missing. I expect we are meant to replace it as before. Too simple. There will be some additional defense mechanism. Just a moment. There are words carved into the stone. He who would disturb a hero's deserved slumber shall instead waken the beast and know his folly. Oh no, they're gonna move that thing. Wait, don't! What? But I only... What is happening? <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh, oh no, oh no, it lives! <sighs> Why am I not surprised? Prepare yourselves! What they just teleported them away? All of us away. I'm by myself. Okay. Why are they next to it? What in God's name? What? Huh? You trespass mortal upon sacred ground and retribution for souls have I bound. Yet to heroes proved learned and wise a comrade's soul shall be their prize. If you would see they're set free, answer me these riddle three. Theft of paw with kin do I vie. Thought sought apart, sought apart betterment of the whole to our efforts descry. What am I? What? Theft of paw with kin do I vie. Though sought apart betterment of of the whole to our efforts descry. <sighs> Indeed, the upper upper is keen and shrewd. The spirit of ingenuity by whose guidance the Rokans did prosperity pursue. The riddle's answer you did discern and thus see you a soul return. For the fearsome thing I travel with pack, together we find harmony, and thus for peace our land does not lack.
Wolf pack bangs. Indeed, twas the spirit of the wolf, their doctrines praised. Uh, that they would know peace and harmony to the end of their days. The riddles answer you did discern, and thus to you a soul returns. On my belly do I crawl, by my strength does prosperity reign within our hall. What am I? My belly do I crawl. My belly do you crawl? Indeed, the dread serpent turned protector, lured to slumber ere it tear the world asunder. Riddle's answer you did discern, and thus to you to serve so a soul returns. That was Yashtola. Desire you that which I yet claim, then we shall play another game. A test of mind and memory, choose wisely and you all be get, go free. Six these talismans hide friend and foe, choose your companions well or sorrow now. I didn't even get to see. Oh. Okay, so that's oh, it's just fucking matching. Oh, I got two though. Okay, found her. There you go. Done. Your comrades are assembled together at last. Yet still there remains one trial you must pass. If you would glean the knowledge enshrined in this earth, I would first take the measure of your worth. Taft. Oh, I gotta fight it. One worthy of she who the Ronkans intold. Extolled must be strong of mind, body, and soul. Mound then. Here I come. There's her. We have to save her. Impressive. Ooh. Like what you see.
I think you have one. We have only just begun. Animate. Is that like a shop? Was that? Boom. Damn, why is it so tanky at the last bit? There you go. Well, fought hero, the trial is complete, the way is open, and thus I concede defeat. Well then, a wholly unexpected but an exhausting ordeal, nevertheless. We're back. It would seem the magics have returned us. How polite. Now, what have we learned? <laughs> ah, we were bound to run into a living statue eventually. And now we can open the door. <laughs> Look at it on Tiki. Who would disturb a hero's deserved slumber? Is that a coffin? A tomb, just as I thought, befitting a hero. She is Vis. Could it be the Archmage Tuna? A legendary hero of Ronka, as you surmised. The tales tell of how she smote entire armies with a single incantation, so potent was her spellcraft. Though she ever fought in the name of peace. I thought them no more than tales. To think she really existed. Well, I for one always believed. I wonder. By the light of fallen stars. Great power awakens. Tuna was not only a master of spellcraft. It is said she could see truths long lost and hear the voices of men's hearts. Huh. Not less than the echo. Yeah, it's the echo. In which case, none of this is mere coincidence. 
A shower of stars setting the sky aflame. And in both this world and the source, we find individuals within whom a mysterious power awakened at the sight. We can never unpick the why of it. Now, however, I believe we might. Does the scene depicted here not resemble the one we saw when we first ventured into the Katana Ravel? Moreover, does it not recall that which Emmett Selk invited us to witness in Amarot? The final days. If, as the Exarch's research suggests, soul and mind share a fragile yet profound bond, might it not be possible for an event to leave such a deep imprint upon the soul that it could be perceived eons later, given a suitable trigger? The echo defies explanation by conventional etherological theory, or shall we say modern etherological theory, but if it is a power that once belonged to the ancients, to souls yet undivided, Ah, it would seem I have entered the realm of pure speculation, and I call myself a scholar. I shall refrain from making any further wild claims until such time as I have evidence. Still, I cannot choose but be reminded of our experience in Amarot. Then you must recall Emmett Selk's dying request. Remember us. History is love, not live. We have always protected the tales of Ronka just as we have protected this place. But we are mindful of what our mothers taught us. We see the past through our own eyes and speak of it with our own words. Thus do we come to understand it in our own way. But this is not the same as remembering. Your mothers were wise. Though we witnessed the final days, our impressions could not fail to be colored by our own experiences and expectations. Those who lived through it would have perceived the event quite differently. We must bear in mind that it is no simple matter to keep the truth alive, or it will die with Emmett Selk and his kin. But we have disturbed you not long enough. Thana will serve similarly well as a venue for our contemplations. You had the echo too, huh? By your pensive expression, I take it the tomb has given you much to think about? That is well. In time, the knowledge you have gleaned will lead to understanding and thus arm you for what is to come. Before you leave, however, I would speak again of the teachings of our forebears, of histories learned, not lived. The legend of Tiuna and her exploits have been told countless times over the centuries, yet as it is handed from one generation to the next, the story changes. With each telling of the tale, there are new flourishes, details changed or lost. We could never truly know how she lived, for we were not there to see it. We are here now to bear witness to your life. We have seen the change you have wrought and the echoes the echoes that will endure long after you are gone. And though it too will change in time, I swear to you, we shall do our best to preserve your story. I hope you'll forgive me if I don't make an oath of my own, but I think it goes without saying we could never misspeak of your heroism. Perish the thought, so long as we are here, there are none among the beasts who will not know all you have done for Norvrant. We are not deserving of such reverence, but we are grateful all the same. You can be certain we will have our own tales to tell with the great guardians of Raktika and the ruins of Ronka. I pray you safe travels then.
As ever, we shall await your return with open arms. What do you have to say? Although we learned not of the Asians, the insight we gained into the Echo made our trip worthwhile. Before we return to the Crystallium, however, there is a small matter I would attend to in Slitherbo. Might I trouble you to come with me? Yeah. Thank you. After we arrive, we should have a brief word, brief word with Runar.